Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very senior entrepreneur from Singapore, Mr. Daniel Tando. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm uh, honored and privileged to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel is the founder of Ohm Care, which is a Singapore-based award-winning brand of sustainable personal care solutions. He's also passionate about growing the next generation of finance and accounting professionals through mentoring. So Daniel, before we start talking about Ohm Care, tell me about your own journey and what led you to Ohm Care. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. So um, one of the reasons, uh, there, there were a couple of reasons why I started uh, uh, Omcare, this business. Um, and uh, I think I, I can distill it down to three main ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first thing is I, I did work uh, a couple of years in this particular industry uh, for other people, obviously. Um, different size companies, large ones, startups. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, all of them had one thing in common. Uh, the industry is one of the biggest, uh, the world's biggest plastic polluter by industry. Mm-hmm. I think uh, by, if we look at by industry, it is probably one of the top three. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, of course, including F&B, uh, food and beverage industry, that's obviously uh, then uh, also construction. So I was, uh, I mean, the more I learned about it, the more concerned I got because mm-hmm. uh, uh, I also uh, read a lot about uh, the climate change, climate crisis that we are in right now and how mm-hmm. plastic contributes to that. Yeah. So the second thing that uh, what I was very concerned with was um, the um, uh, the usage of uh, a lot of uh, harmful, potentially even toxic um, uh, ingredients mm-hmm. uh, in a lot of the things uh, that we use that are called personal care products. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are, uh, most of these are derived from various types of artificial chemicals mm-hmm. um, meant to enhance certain um, uh, properties uh, of the product, um, but uh, used in the long term, uh, and because these things can accumulate in the body, so it can be either um, uh, cancer causing uh, or causing cardiovascular diseases. Uh, so this uh, that was another area of concern for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally, for me personally, on a personal level, mm-hmm. um, I uh, I always struggle with the issue of a uh, very sensitive scalp. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't have that much issue with you know uh, other parts of my skin, but uh, mm-hmm. my scalp is in particular uh, quite sensitive. So a lot of the, all the different types of shampoo that I've tried uh, in the past, and I've tried you know, dozens of brands and different models. Mm-hmm. Um, it has never worked for me. You know, I always still end up with uh, itchy scalp. I I always end up with uh, a lot of acne break acne breakout quite frequently. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in search of solutions to all these three, um, to to look at zero plastic solutions, to look at all natural chemical free solutions, to look at uh, an actual solution, you know, a shampoo that works for myself. Um, that that is what led to kind of uh, the formation of this business. Yeah, amazing. And what is uh, behind this amazing name, O H M M M? Uh, okay, it's it's quite interesting the genesis of it. I think uh, uh, if I think back, uh, actually it was um, we we came up with more or less uh, uh, with this brand in a kind of uh, I would call it a democratic fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I gathered uh, at that time I had a few interns with me who was helping me with the design, mm-hmm. uh, with the marketing plans, and and my wife also was involved with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we kind of threw up a couple of names, uh, you know, randomly, right? In, in kind of brainstorming what, what the brand should be. And uh, someone, you know, called our home. And then so, so we list down um, all the brand names that, mm. that we called out. And we took a vote uh, right at the end of uh, um, 10 minutes. And then we said, okay, whichever one has the most votes, uh, we'll pick that. Mm. So, um, and then, okay, later when... Um, and as I think back, I, I recall that the story behind it was, you know, um, I think it, it is partly inspired, I think, by the um, 
uh, you know, when people do yoga, um, so they and and this this ohm is kind of a, a uh, I guess um, again I'm not that well versed in it, yeah. so you know uh, um, I apologize. You know this is not meant to be to be any the, to have any kind of religious. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing is, when we we think about ohm, right, and and uh, there is an association with yoga, but yeah. to me and to the team, it's like okay, it's it it brings it is. It, it brings and it signifies a kind of peace, right? It brings peace, uh, mm. peace of mind. Mm. And that was what uh, really one of the major things we had in mind when we said we want to develop uh, solutions that are zero plastic, zero chemicals, um, that it will bring peace of mind to the user. So it's a, um, the ultimate, what we want to achieve is peace of mind, enjoyment, for our users and consumers, yeah. Oh, so that that is, and that is how this brand resonated with us. So we thought, okay, let's let's uh, let's go with this. Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when when you talk sustainability, mm -hmm. um, and home care uh, is obviously a very very sustainable range of brands and products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about why is it important to build sustainable brands and products okay um i think um it's it's quite obvious to us right with uh, what is happening with climate change mm -hmm. climate crisis mm -hmm. and um we know that a lot uh, of these factors are uh, uh in fact man-made right mm -hmm. uh through the various things and and ultimately it is what we uh, produce what we consume and in the process of producing and consuming um, all the um, carbon uh, emissions that we release into the mm. air that causes all these. So, so I think it, it is therefore um, really, uh, and we, a lot of people call this the existential, the, the, um, it's basically the human race existential issue. Mm. So, so it is something that we really need to address. And sustainable businesses and products, I think, really is, is a major factor in this, mm. whole, uh, in this whole thing. Because um, if we can um, uh, start producing and consuming a lot more products that are sustainable mm. in the way it is produced, in the way that it is um, sourced, in the way that it is consumed, mm. uh, then I think we can really uh, make an impact in, in terms of um, um, carbon emissions, in terms of um, human health, uh, and in terms of this addressing this entire climate crisis. So, so I think um, th that is why I, I believe so strongly that, and uh, I mean, to the extent that I, I decided to start this business as part of my action in response to, to um, the climate crisis, that we, I think, um, what we want to do is to make a difference at the end of a positive difference and a positive impact. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, tell me a little bit about your products. I mean, and I see a soap behind you and I see one bottle, which probably is for shampoo or uh -huh. something. Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little okay. bit about your range. Of yeah. Products. So, so uh, let me just show you, uh, in, uh, you know, physically, this is how it looks. It's, it's it, it, I don't know, to some people it looks big, to some people they say it's quite compact. Yeah. Uh, so this is our signature product, the water activated powder shampoo. Um, and and uh, this, uh, uh, this shampoo, uh, it, although it is in powder form, actually you use it like a normal liquid shampoo. So okay. how you, very simple steps. Uh, you still need to wet your hair, right, to start, uh, which is what we do with all mm -hmm. every other shampoo. And we pour out about half to one teaspoon of powder, mm -hmm. depending on um, the, our hair length. Uh, and then we add uh, a little bit of uh, a few drops of water into uh, onto the powder. And then we go directly on the hand. We start lathering oh. as as normal, right? Uh, as per normal. So so um, uh, it would just uh, you would just wash as normal, and then after that you rinse it off, right? Uh, now what is so unique about powder is uh, is that uh, actually this one bottle uh, mm. is equal to three bottles Correct. of the liquid. same amount of liquid shampoo. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, because typically uh, liquid shampoo will contain up to ninety percent water okay. and uh, water we know is heavy mm. uh, and whenever we transport uh, uh, heavy things around 
uh, the carbon footprint will be high, right? Because of the energy required to transport. Okay. So by reducing the weight, uh, and even with the bottle, mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the weight of our shampoo is at least 70% uh, less uh, than the equivalent mm -hmm. amount of liquid shampoo. So thus, uh, automatically, it shrinks the carbon footprint, right. and so making it more sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and in, in addition, we also do our best to source most of the ingredients either locally or regionally. Um, so that uh, again, you know, uh, ingredients don't travel far distances, mm -hmm. uh, and that also contributes to a low carbon footprint. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I also uh, take uh, very very um, special care to ensure that our packaging are entirely zero plastic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and therefore there's not a plastic plant because we know mm -hmm. plastic pollution is a major issue, and yeah. it is uh, actually a part of the factor of of this uh, whole climate crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing, um, to to round off the the whole um packaging sustainability equation, what we do mm -hmm. is we we make the uh, this packaging reusable. So so uh, in fact, uh, in in its uh, you know. Uh, we, what we envision is an, in the consumer's lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, he or she just needs one bottle. And um, after finishing the first bottle, uh, they can just um, purchase refills from us. We mm -hmm. have refill packs yeah. that are also uh, packaged in, in uh, uh, zero plastic uh, mm -hmm. packaging. So the entire chain, we, we really tried our best to do uh, a zero plastic uh, solution. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, the other product is this uh, conditioner bar, yeah, okay. which is which is this uh, this yeah. one that you see over here. Mm -hmm. So again, as you can see, um, our products uh, and, and this um, it's it's all about thinking, uh, what is what is the change necessary. Mm -hmm. um, now, condition, now, bars have been around for, for decades, yeah? So this is a, a pretty established, uh, we might say even a uh, relatively old technology. Mm -hmm. But we felt that this one was uh, uh, actually, in terms of its performance, it really delivers excellent mm -hmm. uh, uh, properties. So we don't feel there is a need to, to change or, or to innovate, to reinvent the wheel too much. Whereas the powder, uh, we felt that it was really a good, change because it, it offers uh, even though there are existing shampoo bars in mm -hmm. the market uh, we feel that the powder can offer something a little bit of a step up in terms of performance characteristic and properties mm -hmm. so that is why we went with a little bit more innovative uh, approach mm -hmm. uh, rather than just sticking with the bars mm -hmm. yeah so uh, if you know yeah so some of the common uh, thread that we see is zero plastic zero waste um, and also, we make it as lightweight as possible. So in order to make it lightweight, we uh, turn to a form factor that is uh, uh, free from water. Yeah, mm -hmm. Because water is heavy, so okay. we remove uh, probably the heaviest component of it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we uh, gain significant weight savings, and which automatically uh, shrinks the carbon footprint. Quite amazing. And are there other products? I mean, I've never seen a shampoo which is available in powder form. Uh, well, the uh, um, we are the first to come up with it in Southeast Asia. Mm. Um, uh, I believe uh, we, we have seen um, uh, other brands uh, in the US, mm. uh, in Europe, uh, come uh, uh, also uh, in a similar form factor. So, mm. so um, yeah, I, I mean, we, we certainly will not... Uh, go to the extent of saying we are the first uh, in the world. No, uh, I'm, I'm okay. quite aware we are not. <laughs> so, yeah, fair enough. Uh, we, we got inspiration from them and that mm -hmm. is how we, we decided to um, to really explore this form factor and, and really uh, introduce it to the market. Very yeah. interesting. And Daniel, <laughs> uh, for products like the two that you talked about or showed us, mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest challenges is how to build a brand. Right. You yes. know, because only when you get repeat purchase do you start yes. to make money out of it. <laughs> it is true. What have been some of your challenges as you have built home care as a brand? I think one of the, uh, certainly the biggest challenge for us is uh, finding the customer mm -hmm. uh, who, who truly, um, uh, who can, who will buy into the message, mm -hmm. right? That uh, one, um, that the uh, ought to try something that is more sustainable. Mm. Uh, two, that it is indeed capable of um, 
performing to the level of uh, conventional products. Mm. Right? Because I think this is a, a, a major, um, when I speak to customers, um, one of the most frequent feedback that we get from them is, oh, uh, I've tried sustainable products, but in, I, I, I don't think it is uh, as good as the conventional ones that mm. I've been using for decades. Uh, so so, uh, so that is why I was uh, quite uh, determined that when we want to roll out something, it has to be at least as good as uh, what the conventional Correct. alternative is out there, or you know, ideally, it should be better. Yeah, mm. and I think there is absolutely no reason why a sustainable product cannot be uh, as good as or better in terms of pro- all mm. the performance properties. Yeah. Mm. Um, that is one thing. So, so I, and finding the right customer has been, I think, quite, uh, uh, quite an interesting journey for us, because um, um, we do hear a lot about, oh, how the young, uh, like the millennials, uh, the Gen Zs, uh, they are, um, they are very passionate about sustainability. Mm. Uh, yet, interestingly, what we find is that um, the majority of our actual buying paying customers mm. uh, are a little bit more mature in age so okay. um, uh, I would say the typical profile of our customer would be like in their mid 30s to the mid 50s mm-hmm. uh, mostly uh, uh, already they have formed a family they have uh, young children um, these these uh, the, this is the typical profile and, and um, what I, uh, uh, we find is that, yes, they are concerned about sustainability, mm. uh, but beyond that, they are actually um, taking action. They are really um, putting their consumer dollar mm. to where they really see is, is the sustainable product and they want to support. So, so, and, and, you know, so, so sometimes I am quite surprised that when, when I speak to prospective customers, they, they may not be actually very, very uh, so-called highly aware of, mm. you know, issues concerning, uh, you know, whether we talk about climate cancer or sustainability, but they said, Hey, I, I, I think, you know, this, this is something that uh, I, I should be concerned about. Mm. And uh, I, I want to uh, give it a shot, you know, at uh, living more sustainably. So they, then they decided, you know, uh, give, me, give me a set of the products. Mm. So, so um, that is, uh, and that, that happens uh, so many times that uh, we, we kind of observe that that is to, that to be a, a, a trend, at least uh, as far as our brand is concerned. So right. I think, yes, there is definitely a tremendous challenge. Uh, initially, I think we, we kind of, slightly um, uh, misestimated uh, where, where our core audience, uh, uh, our core uh, consumers will be. Mm. But I think we, we are kind of adjusting to that. Mm. And uh, obviously also, of course, the, the, the medium of advertising, uh, we started digital, you know, we, we, we were first uh, only available online, um, but we find that a lot of customers being a little bit more mature, they like mm. the retail experience. So we, we try to bring a little bit of retail experience to them. Mm. Uh, we try to bring a little bit more um, the traditional media um, exposure for, for our brand. Yeah, so mm. that, um, you're right. I mean, it, it is always a, a, a huge challenge to bring. And, and these past two years, we've learned many, many lessons. Mm. Um, but I think it's worthwhile and, and it really positions us much stronger for the coming years. Yeah. Mm. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. There is another myth that goes with sustainable products, mm-hmm. which is that it will be much, much more expensive. Ah, <laughs> yes, that is a very common perception. Oh. So, um, okay, I think, uh, first of all, to understand uh, why why it is so. So, mm. uh, there, there are truly very valid reasons why. Um, first of all, typically, um, now, uh, sustainable products are still very niche. Mm. Uh, and a lot of these brands are still startup brands, right? Mm. Uh, so, therefore, uh, first thing uh, that is always a challenge is economies of scale. Mm. Um, because um, as startup brand, uh, we sell not not in the numbers that PNG or Unilever yeah. would. Uh, so mm-hmm. our production, therefore, is also follows the same logic. So uh, we produce in small batches, uh, mm-hmm. in in rather um, limited quantities. Uh, and the other thing is that because um, if we especially if we want to go 100% natural ingredient, uh, we really need to source around uh, because um, most 
producers or you know even if we i mean in, as in our case where we work with contract manufacturers mm. they are very used to using conventional ingredients you know which means uh, artificial chemicals and all that mm. those are easy to produce but when you want to really source on natural uh, um, ingredients mm. it's a challenge and typically natural ingredients we know that uh, you know we also want to look for um, very uh, high quality and and um, especially for for sustainable brands we want mm-hmm. to make sure the the sustainability of the sourcing right so that uh, uh, brings about inevitably uh, a higher uh, cost uh, to higher producer cost mm-hmm. right so uh, uh, definitely if if the brand wants to be a viable business going forward it needs to be able to recover the cost mm-hmm. so therefore the, the selling price will be a little bit higher so what we uh, try to do in terms of um, uh, mitigating this challenge is we try to deliver, as I mentioned, as high a performance as possible so that mm. we, in some sense, we are playing a little bit um, in the mid to higher tiers, yes, as a start, because we know that, that we, mm. are, we are facing that handicap in terms of cost. Um, uh, and then, so so what I did, uh, especially for the, the um, powder shampoo, and mm-hmm. both the powder shampoo and the conditioner bar, actually, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what we have done is to push the performance uh, capability of these. Um, so um, as I mentioned, this one is equivalent to three bottles of Correct. liquid shampoo. Yeah. So um, I always uh, explain to uh, our customers, so the way to think about our value proposition is to take this, right, uh, um, divide the cost by three, and then you think about what is the comparable out there mm. that you can get. Uh, and uh, I always uh, dare to challenge them. I said, look, um, if you divide by three, uh, I dare you to find uh, an equal mm. in terms of quality and performance yeah. um, to our product mm. right, at the price at that particular price level That's and right. you tell me yeah if you can find one that is better and i am um then this is where i think um you know to people who, who really who then can understand uh to look at things that way mm. that uh truly our products are deliver uh, if we compare it that way our products are delivering much better uh, uh performance and quality at the same level as you know, uh, uh, at the same price level with mm-hmm. conventional uh, products, so so that is where um, we do get uh, start to get more buy-ins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm I'm not, I certainly am not uh, 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 disputing the fact that uh, sustainable products can be higher. Now the understand. other, yeah, yeah, the other way to think about it, I actually also challenge customers is uh, think about. Because uh, when we come to conventional products, there are a lot of hidden um, uh, after costs that we, mm-hmm. we, we, we kind of think about it. Um, why? Because uh, if you think about it, if we use a lot of plastic and there's a lot of plastic pollution, we have to deal with a lot of the health effects uh, that comes later. So it doesn't come now, but 10, 20 years later, because mm-hmm. we know that high uh, plastics tend to leach uh, a lot of toxic chemicals mm-hmm. into the soil, into the waters. So we will be, the, uh, and uh, some of the effects will be in- would include like uh, cancer, higher risk of cancer, higher risk of cardiovascular disease, mm. and higher risk of hormonal uh, disorders. Mm. Uh, and I do see it actually uh, in many of my friends and even family members who are experiencing uh, much higher incidence of, of these kinds of chronic diseases. Right. And these chronic diseases bring with it uh, you know, entails a lot of costs in terms of treatment, doctor mm. visits, and all that. So I think this is something that we ought to start taking into account when we, uh, you know, look at our consumption patterns and mm. the things, uh, and the things we 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 buy and the brands that we support. So mm. so I think costs we need to look at it not just at at the most um, visible and explicit level, but yeah. also the, the hidden and, and the long-term costs. Yes. Absolutely. Well said. Yeah. Daniel, we've run out of time. So I just yeah. want to say on that note, thank you for talking to me. Thank you for telling me about your journey, about how you built home care as a, as a very, very fascinating, sustainable personal care brand. Thank you for talking to me about what goes into building sustainability in the two products that you already launched. Thank you for talking to me about sustainability of a brand, about 
the pricing of a sustainable product and what are the what, how important it is to take everything in the right context uh, especially yes. when you compare like for like with competing non sustainable brands absolutely yeah thank you so, so much uh, shutosh for this opportunity and and it's really uh, you know it's been my pleasure to 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 share all these thank you thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals you can also follow us on youtube facebook instagram and twitter just search for the brand called you